Well, welcome again, North End family, and I'm delighted to be talking to one of our frontline workers. They're all very special, but Marg Wilgamut has a special place in my life because she actually thinks that I'm funny. But apart from that, <laughs> Marg, thanks for being with us today. I want you to tell our church family and our online community what it is that you exactly do as a frontline worker. Okay, I'd be happy to. I work at Haida Hoff, and we are a long-term care facility. I'm a registered nurse, and so some of my duties are I work with the, uh, with a team, and so I oversee um, the RPNs. They're excellent RPNs and our PSWs, and then I have a whole host of other duties that, I, that I'm responsible for. Um, so okay. that's basically what I do. All right. Well, those are a lot of letters that I'm trying to remember in RPM. And, uh, but you've been involved with COVID and for 12 months. How has that affected, first of all, talk about the frontline workers. What were some of the emotional swings that you went through? Well, I, I think at the beginning, like we, we shut down quite quickly at the beginning. So that was in March when we went into this pandemic. And uh, so we, we were uh, out, we were COVID free for nine months, nine and three quarter months, we were COVID free. Then it hit. So in January, January the 8th, we went into outbreak. Uh, and it was crazy. Those first few days, I wasn't there because I was still on a leave. Uh, but from talking to the staff, they said there was nothing like it. When it hit, when the first person became infected, it just spread like wildfire. So let me wild. jump in. Explain what goes on in a in a doctor and nurse's uh, mind when they hear that someone's infected. Walk us through that. Well, immediately you put everybody in their room. Immediately everybody is fully garbed with all your PPE. So you can't go into a room without having a mask on, shield on, your gown and your gloves. Okay, that's how you have to go into the room. You cannot go into the room of any way, any other way. And then, so it's very important to put that on correctly. And then as you take it off, it's even more important because now you've been in an infected room and you have to make sure that you don't infect yourself and you don't infect anybody else. So immediately everybody went into their own rooms. So a lot, of, a lot of fear and anxiety, right? Yes, yes, a lot of fear and anxiety. So what happens when you go into the rooms to deal with the patients? What kind of questions are they asking you? Are they looking for you to calm their concerns or fears? Walk us through what you're dealing with. Well, because I'm not, I'm not the caregiver. Um, so when I go in, it's, it's usually because there's, there's a problem or there's a death, right? When I go into the room. Um, so, but when our, when our staff goes in, they, um, I mean, they treat them as a human. They're, they're very kind. They're very compassionate. They have to bring their meals in. They have to reassure them that they can't come out because of the virus, because nobody can see this virus. And so they always wonder, why can't I go out? Because we're dealing with dementia. There's a lot of dementia that we're dealing with. So, I mean, we just try to be as friendly as we, as we possibly can. And you must have to deal then, of course, with family members who are trying to connect. What is oh, that? Yes. What's that like? What yeah, kind of things well, do you deal with? I think, I think because out in the community, we don't understand what's going on. Um, we just, the family wants to know why we're not calling. They, they want to know, you know, what's going on. A lot of them can't come in. Usually only one person can come in and that's only if they've been uh, COVID negative. They've had to have a swab. They have to be negative for seven days. Every seven days, they have to do this and only one person can come in if they've been approved. So, I mean, there is a lot of anxiety with the family members, and so we have to calm their fears as well. It almost seems like you're providing pastoral counseling or care <laughs> to people. Well, it's more of a nursing, a nursing kind of a thing, but you yeah, know, yeah. So we're trying to calm them down as well. Talk to me about your faith in Christ, because I know you love the Lord, and that's a key part of your, your whole journey. How do you prepare yourself to go into work to deal with someone who might, I know you often have to pronounce people who have died, and then you're dealing with all those things. How do you prepare yourself each day? Well, as you know, or I mean, 
obviously my faith is very important to me and like it's very important to me like i know that i don't go in alone i'm always christ is always with me and i think that's a huge comfort i know that ben is always praying for me um so when i when i leave in the i mean all the time sometimes we pray as we go in and then i keep reminding him you have to pray for me today so and he and he knows that i mean it's just something that we do together um and also it's very important for me to have my daily devotions um you know i need to be close with christ and i need to be reminded i need to know uh, his reassurances he gives me strength um compassion for people the my the, the decisions that i have to make every day i rely on that wisdom for christ from christ you know so it's very important mark i want to thank you for sharing a little bit about that it helps us to have an insight how to pray how to think about people who are in uh, places, especially dealing with dementia and long-term uh, illnesses, I just want to say thank you for being there, uh, for representing the Lord, for representing North End Church. Uh, we are cheering you on, and uh, despite all my lame jokes, you're on my top 10 list. I just want you to know that. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for thank being you. here today. Yeah, thank you. Okay.